going to sow a few of these today, butternut squash. They grow really big, these plants, but they are very reliable because I've been growing them for the last two to three years. And we've got some really big size squashes off them. And I've used them uh, myself on my cooking channel, uh, making butternut squash soup. So there's a good use for them for me as well, personally. Uh, so we might as well get a few planted. And I think I'm going to do about 12. But when you do grow butternut squash, make sure you've got plenty of room because they do get quite big, these plants. They're a vining plant and you can train them up trellises and things if that's more suitable for you. So we'll just get some uh, compost in this and get the seeds sorted out. So now we've got compost in, I'm just going to firm it down a little bit. Then I'll just top it back off again. So, same as cucumber seeds, they're quite big, so not a problem when you come to planting them. Just make sure your seeds aren't dried out and really thin or cracked, because if they are, they probably won't work. So because of such big seeds, obviously it's going to be one per cell. So, like I said, simple and straightforward. Just push them down, about the depth of your fingernail. They'll have no problem getting through compost either, so we don't need to give them a really light covering. And then we'll just go over the top with a bit of compost just to fill those holes in. Now we just need to water them in. Then we'll just stick a label in. I'm using these recycled lollipop sticks. So that's all butternut squash seeds done. And with it being warm weather, I don't think they're going to take too long to come up either. So that's pretty good. Uh, but when you do these, uh, don't cover them with like cling film or anything like that. Because if you do, when the plants come out, they're quite big plants and you're going to end up misshaping the stems as they're trying to push up. So just leave them as they are. So now I've got those done, I'm also going to sow some watermelon seeds as well. I have grown these before and they seem to do all right as well. So uh, they're called Crimson Sweet. I'll put links to the seeds in the description if anybody wants some butternut squash or some watermelon seeds. So exact same as before, just fill this up. And pack it down just a little. And these seeds, they're not as big, but they're still a good size. So again, easy to plant. And the same as before, it's just one seed to a cell. You don't want to try multi-sowing plants like this because they're quite big already when they come out and you're more liable to damage the plant by trying to separate the roots because the roots all grow quite quick and they'll become all tangled together. So again, quick and easy, push it down about fingernails depth and then just cover over with some compost. And a quick water. And make sure you leave both of these plants, if you're growing them, somewhere warm until they germinated. And again, label it. Now I'm gonna pop them both inside this tray together. propagator lid on top of them. This is just more to stop mice trying to dig seeds up, which they have done in the past if you've seen my previous videos. They especially like sweet corn, so just be aware of that. If you can, just cover them up like this, but not with cling film, because that's going to hinder the plant's growth as soon as it germinates. So you want something like this that's away from the soil. 
and then you can just pop this to one side and then your seeds are going to be safe until they've germinated. Anyway, thanks for watching that, really appreciate it. I think next few videos I do, I might be doing them outside because it's starting to get a little bit too warm in this greenhouse. And they've now predicted that next week we're going to be getting temperatures up to about 73. So if you want to see what else we get up to over the next few months, just hit that subscribe button, press that notifications bell, and we'll see you next time.